in the previous video, we solved a Harvard MIT math problem and also posted a bonus question. How hard is it to solve the bonus question? Let's find out. What's up, YouTube? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. So I posted a video going over a Harvard MIT math tournament problem that came from 2019 combinatoric round. If you haven't watched it already, you may want to click on this link and watch it first. If you just need a refresher on what the problem said, then here's the problem. You can pause the video right now and read through the problem so you know the setup. So after I posted the video, I made a comment that said, Cool, now that we know the answer to the original question, let's ask a new question. Let's ask, how many rounds on average does it take to get 100 coins? And to be honest, when I asked that question, I didn't think about it too much. I just like, okay, this is a good question to ask. I didn't know how hard or how easy is it to solve. But one of the viewers asked me whether or not the answer is 426.8. So that's actually a good guess and let me tell you why. Spoiler alert, in the previous video, we concluded that the expected number of coins after playing in round is 1.01 to the n. So one might ask, with that, can we just set up 1.01 to the n equal to 100? And solving in the equation, if that n is approximately 426.8, what's the conclusion? So the conclusion is, if we play the game for around 426.8 rounds, then we expect to get around 100 coins. But this is actually not the correct answer, and here's why. This answer said if we fixed the number of rounds to 426.8 rounds, then we get 100 coins on average. But the question asks for a different thing. The question asks if we fix the number of coins to 100, what is the average number of rounds? So there's a subtle difference between what the answer is explaining versus what the question asks. So how do we solve for the answer? Again, if you haven't tried this problem on your own yet, please pause the video and take out your pen and paper and think about how would you solve this problem. But if you're ready, here we go. All right, so we're gonna go through the same process as we did in the previous video. What do you do first? Simulation. So how do we do that? First, I tell the computer how to play the game for one round. Then I tell the computer what does it mean to play until we get a certain number of coins. Lastly, I ask the computer to play the game until we get 100 coins write down the number of rounds, then start over with one coin and play again until we get 100 coins. We keep doing this over and over so we see the number of rounds we get on average. And here's the result. The number of rounds can be as low as high 300 or can be as high as almost 1000. How about the average? The average is 517 rounds. So this confirmed that number 426 is not the correct answer. Alright, now that we got simulation in our bag, then what do we do next? Well, we try to go small, which means we try to answer the same question but for the smaller case. So the original question asks, how many rounds on average do we need to play in order to get to 100 coins? So let's ask a similar question. How many rounds on average do we play until we get a few number of coins? We can try one coin, but one coin is trivial. Because we start with one coin, so the number of rounds will be zero. So let's do two coins. To do this, we need to use a fact that pretty easy to convince yourself that this is a case. Let's say you have a random process, like rolling a die or flipping a coin, such that your interested outcome happen at probability p. Then the fact we're going to use is, you are expected to run the process 1 over p times until you get your desired result. Why does this make sense intuitively? Think of rolling a die. If you have a fair die, then each faces on the die will show up at probability of 1 over 6. So let's say you want to roll a die until you get 1. Since 1 happened at probability 1 over 6, it made a lot of sense to say that you expected to roll the die 6 times until you get 1. If you like flipping a coin better, you can say you expected to flip a coin twice until you get hit. Proving that fact, we are required to know how to sum up series like this. If you want to see how to sum up series like this, let me know in the comment section. I'm more than happy to make another video about that. With that fact, how would that help us solve the problem? Well, that's easy because you start with one coin, you have 1% chance in each round to get to two coins. So the number of rounds you expect that you run is 1 over 1%, which is just 100. So the answer to simplified version of the problem is you are expected to play the game 100 rounds 
in order to move from one to two coins. Okay, so now that we know how to move from one to two, how about to three coins? This one is a little complicated because there's no one probability that make you move from one to three coins. But you can think of it this way. The number of rounds to get from one to three is the same as number of rounds one to two plus the number of rounds from two to three. And that makes the problem much easier because we already know the first part. From one to two, we take 100 rounds. So all we need to find is how many rounds does it take to move from two coins to three coins. We can use the fact that we just discussed again. If you have two coins in each round, you have 2% chance to get one more coin, so you have three coins. So how many rounds are you expected to play? Well, it's 1 over 2%, which turned out to be 50. So it takes around 50 rounds to move from two coins to three coins. So in total, you are expected to play the game 150 rounds to move from one coin to three coins. With this, we are ready to go all the way to our original question. How many rounds does it take to get from one coin to 100 coins? And I know I said this already, but at this point, if you haven't figured out the answer yet, it's probably a really good time to pause the video, think a little bit how we would use the technique and the knowledge we learned throughout this video to solve the original problem. All right, how do we solve it? How do we calculate the number of rounds from 1 to 100? Well, we can break it down to 99 steps, right? 100 mean 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, all the way to 99 to 100. All right, so this is what we want to compute. Expected number of rounds to go from 1 to 100 is the same as expected number of rounds from 1 to 2, all the way to expect the number of rounds from 99 to 100. And we know all of this, right? So if you have one coin, to move to two coins, there's a 1% chance. So the number of rounds is 1 over 1%, which is 100. Two to three coins, we have 2%. So the number of rounds is 1 over 2%, which is 100 over 2. From 3 to 4 would be 100 over 3. From 99 to 100 would be 100 over 99, which turned out to be something like this. So after this, there's not much we can do from here except using a calculator. And after using a calculator, the answer turned out to be something like 517.7, which is pretty darn close to the result we get from the simulation. Alright, so that's all I want to talk about today. If you have any more questions, please leave the comment down below and I'll make sure I answer every one of your questions. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you will not miss my next video. And before we go, I'd like to say a big thank you to my your own decision which is a big YouTube channel doing math problem. If you don't know about him, then you should definitely check him out. I'll put his channel link in the description down below. But for today, thank you for watching. My name is Kuang and you're watching Enchu's K. Peace! <laughs>